I think that glam bands, which were the extension of one, uh, two particular confluences of, of circumstances. One was MTV, which put a face to the music, and two, Quiet Riot's mental health. They changed everything. And in fact, Quiet Riot, um, Rat, Motley Crue, Twisted Sister, Poison, Warrant, all these bands are classic rock. All these bands are played on classic rock. All these bands, uh, I mean, Def Leppard can be loosely connected to this. Whitesnake is part of this conversation. These bands are lumped together because they all came out from between 1982 and 1986, 87. They were huge and they are part of the if you look at the Broadway show Rock of Ages and you listen to the soundtrack, this is the essence of classic rock genre. I think what happened was they butted up against the end of that era, which was Guns N' Roses, and Guns N' Roses was the transition band to go from Guns N' Roses to grunge, because Guns N' Roses were respected by both glam artists and by, by grunge artists, so post post-glam. It all came crashing down with Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit, which wiped out the genre completely. Again, that's not necessarily classic rock either, but uh, I'm sure you'll hear Welcome to the Jungle on classic rock radio. So you get up to 88, and then there's almost a clear defining line, except now they're being forced to analyze and review this because they need to create a larger demographic, so they're moving classic rock up. But you can't deny the impact of the warrants and the poisons and the twisteds and the motleys and, 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 and all the quote glam and hair bands for lack of a better word. You cannot deny their impact on classic rock. You know the difference in Mick Jagger and Keith Richards? Keith Richards, this is true, Keith Richards says this, it's very funny. He says the difference between Mick and Keith, and it has to do with your question, how are you doing today? He said, Keith says that Mick wakes up every morning and he says what am I doing today, next week, 10 weeks from now, 10 months from now, 10 years from now. Keith gets up and goes, I woke up today. <laughs> All right, so the reason why I think punk isn't part of the language of classic rock necessarily is because the, the years of punk, which is 76, 77 to 80, uh, in middle America wasn't as resonant as it was in New York City and maybe Chicago or maybe LA. You know, maybe Miami. I, I mean, where the urban centers are. It was back in the you know in those in, in Middle America. It was it was Farner, Ario Speedwagon. Um, you know, uh, certainly Kiss was part of that. Uh, uh, Bob Seger was part of it. It was a different rock movement. It was much more mainstreamish for la or corporate rock. So, punk itself wasn't necessarily resonating. If you look at Epic Records, they said the Clash was the world's most important band, and yet. On Epic Records, Cheap Trick sold way more records than The Clash did, okay? Cheap Trick was a Midwestern, the archetype of a Midwestern band. Nugent was Midwestern. These artists were selling bucket loads of records, and these people remain stalwarts of classic rock. Hey, thanks for watching. My name is Daniel Sarkissian. I'm an independent filmmaker from Toronto. I hate that guitar, but I yeah, know. I can play that in one scale. <laughs> don't don't like, you dare laugh. You know, I try to embrace the rock and roll spirit in the sense of I do everything self-funded and independently made with no oversight. As such, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching.